Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me here. My name is Mr. Mocha Lover, and let's continue our Brazil campaign. So, someone brought up last uh, last time that my the music was glitched. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. I'm not really sure. Uh, if it is, I apologize. I checked out the music. It should be okay this time. Let's hope it remains okay. And second of all, the same guy also commented that he might study at the same university that the leader of uh, Integralist Brazil went to. So that'd be really cool. I think that's pretty awesome. So right now, what we're doing is that we are waiting to see what will happen in the rest of South America. Bolivia is at war with Paraguay, while Paraguay is at war with Argentina, who is currently at war with Chile and basically southern Argentina, known as the Patagonian Workers' Front. With that in mind, we have thought that we may go to war with Paraguay. Because if they're fighting a two-front war, it would be an absolute great time to go fight them. But maybe we instead will fight Bolivia. Huh. Bolivia, 79 divisions. We have 11. We have way more manpower than them. We have a few planes. They have none. Maybe Bolivia is the one we should really try to go for. If we can. Because we will have to wait quite a while before we can actually attack anyone. Mobilization, mass production. Do they even... What, what's, this is a Bolivian focus tree. What are their focuses for expanding? Rule the waves, aerial ambitions. Uh, they have not chosen anything. Rewrite the constitution. Oh, they have to wait until 1940. Nationalized banks, abolish slavery, so no Chaco or war. Catholic education program, ward off extremism. Nothing there. Workers' Council, educate the masses, increase social regulation. Really? It looks like Bolivia is at war with Paraguay at the moment, but they can't really do very much. They can demand Acre from us. That'd be actually pretty interesting. But they have to be national populists if they choose to go down that path, which they may or may not do. Uh, let's check out Paraguay real quick, since they are expanding a little bit. Let's see, self-sufficient, slash the budget... Uh, Army First Policy. Uh, what are they doing? They're doing this one. Mobile Warfare instead of Superior Firepower. I don't know, how, don't know how many tanks they have. But where are their focuses for fighting other South American countries? Foreign Advisors. That's interesting. Uh, Colorado Resurgence. Royal Faithful. Banned tr uh, Trader Parties. Uh, yeah, it looks like they have really nothing. Honestly... It might be best just to go fight Bolivia, because they are technically larger than Paraguay. If I don't take them out now, they might just get larger. And Paraguay is already pretty small that we can probably take them out anyways. Hmm. And that'll get us closer to Chile, and kind of extend the front if we have to fight the Syndicalists, if they win in Argentina. And Bolivia is only at war with Paraguay, which they'll probably win the war with them. So let's go try that out. It takes 270 days to do that, and if I can get them as a puppet... Instead of Paraguay, that'll be actually quite a bit stronger, since Paraguay only has 5 to 9 divisions. That's actually not too bad. They're pretty much in the same position as Bolivia, but Bolivia has one more factory, so... Eventually, I want both within my faction, we all say. So if they do go to... Ooh, Bolivia does take out Paraguay, which they definitely will. I'll have to fight Bolivia and Paraguay. Ooh. Yeah, you better hurry up on those guns, guys. Hmm, maybe civilian factories aren't the best thing to make. Oh, they've joined the Entente. Interesting. And they've joined the Third International. 3, 30, 50, that's 50 percent. 60, that's pretty good. I really don't want to build stuff on the coast, but that seems like where the most development is currently at. Yeah, we're going to build that civilian factory first, and then we will shift over to more military production. That'd be good. So, let's see, Third International now contains Switzerland, which will be kind of difficult for Germany, or make it a little more difficult, but they do have Poland. The Belgrade Pact looks pretty strong, you know, for being in the Balkans. Reichspakt has Morocco, the Ottoman Empire is getting torn up by the Cairo Pact in Iran, and, of course, the United States is in a three-way fight with the American Union state. It looks like they're losing because they cannot get any more boys. And the Russian state declared war on Alash Orda. That's pretty much expected. Yeah, it looks like the CSA may win, or the United States will. Uh, man, I was playing my other game, but... Oh, 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 oh! What is this? Empire Brazil. 
Uh, okay, so the Imperial Coronation. Today is a great day for Brazil. Uh, for as Dom Pedro III de Orleans, uh, Bagnancia, yeah, I speak Portuguese totally, was crowned as emperor at the Candelaria Cathedral in Rio de Janeiro. After a long ceremony, our sovereign took the oath of office and was acclaimed by the people. This is the beginning of a new age for our country. Vivo Imperador! Vivo o Brasil! We get all that political power I basically use to justify on Bolivia. And we will be known as the Empire of Brazil. Oh my god, I'm so glad I chose the right flag for that. Pedro the Third. Oh my goodness. Glad to have you aboard. Oh, we're on early mobilization. Partial mobilization. That'd be, that would be quite a bit better. So we can actually make military factories faster. Or what does this do? Or we can make fast factories faster right now. Oh my gosh. Critical power. Country. I can make more stuff. So, ooh, we can get faster civilian factories. Or we get a little more political power in exchange for more stuff. No military factory construction speed. War support. Armor production. That's interesting. No, no. The, oh, better research towns, construction speed, and factory output. Daily political power, construction speed, and production efficiency cap. You got some pretty okay ish people here. Uh, anything interesting here? Infantry, production costs, and production costs could be quite good. Well, let's go with the next focus before I choose anything else. So, we have Pedro, which is. Honestly, extremely awesome. And I did say I want to unite the army, which will be extremely important before we go to war with Bolivia, but it only takes 56 days to do that. These takes 56 as well. Wake of the war, remove extreme density, decentralization, or get more, slightly more political power every day, and we already get 0.86. So we could get rid of Wake of the War, so we get faster justify times, which actually would be good. More daily political power and more war support. Or get rid of, or get more political power and lose a massive hit to our stability. Honestly, both these two are extremely good. I'm going to go with healing the chaos first, mostly because I want to see if that will lessen the time needed to justify on for war against Bolivia. Now, with that in mind, I would like to, I'm going to do the partial mobilization instead of faster civilian and military construction of fa factories, just because we get five percent more factories to be used, and we get basically a plus 20% to construction speed for military factories and plus 10% for you guys so that'll be good just hold out Paraguay please hold out for quite a while oh and they have ended their hostilities well that's one hell of a way to end your um, hostilities just annex them uh, Paraguay you are owned by Argentina they're national populists interesting so they decided to become a puppet of, puppet of them. Bolivia, you got absolutely nothing from that. And I'm totally okay with that. Which means you could potentially be our next ally. We're going to see them as an ally. Future ally. <laughs> an alliance, whether they like it or not. A good alliance. Join the, oh, we can join the Entente. Common with the Canada gets the event the Empire of Brazil petitions to join the Entente. Wow. I did not know I could do that. I did not know as a national populist, as the best national populist possible, being very organic and uh, loving under Pedro with 84% party popularity, that we could join the Entente. I did not know that. Do we have a do we have a focus like to create our own faction? Because I I want to create my own faction. True education. That sounds so good. Direct Imperial prerogatives. Powers, Brazilian youth, that'd be good. No, that's good. More population. Heroic cult. Criminalized racist offenses, so we don't have free speech here, but that's okay. National culture. Oh, this looks so good. Sispianati. Cancels guarantee of independence. Patagonian workers front. Imperial splendor. Sounds really cool. Uh, let's see. Well, that's a lot of political power. Imperial tenacity. More war support. Aid our brothers. The holy struggle. Safeguard the Guarani people. The burden we bear. A Togo. Nepal declared war on the Bratia commune. Awesome. It is 1938, so happy 1938, everyone. Hope you're having a spectacular year. We really need to make more guns. Ooh. Definitely need more guns. Oh, a moment. A monument to Our Lady of Aparacida. Our Lady of Ap Aparacida, despite being a massively popular saint and patron of 
Brazil lacks a proper place to honor it on our nation, for to the Republicans only themselves were worthy of worship. We must ensure that Our Lady is honored. Only the grandest of, the, of cathedrals will do, or a grand work of art. Oh hell yeah, we're gonna get the grandest of cathedrals. We love Our Lady, and we, you know what? We've got the political power to spare. In exchange for 3% more stability, by the time I'm done here, we're gonna be the most stable nation in South America. Man, wouldn't a lot of countries like to say that nowadays? Or ever, really. I've heard there's actually a lot of problems going on in Brazil right now. But that's okay. Every country has its problems. And this green. Right now, this green. I just want to talk about the green. This is such a bright, but not too overly bright green. I really like this color. Looks almost Christmassy. Almost festive green. I like that. I really do. I'm sorry. This is just weird ram ramblings by me. And the monarchy was restored in Greece. And it looks like the game is... Oh my god, what just happened? Well. Open. Ooh, that tea is hot. But we have the monarchy restored in Greece. And we just saw the implosion of... Deutsch Mental Africa. So I was going to explain earlier before uh, something happened over here. But I was playing as Deutsch Mental Africa uh, last night, or I guess two nights ago at this point. And I'm trying to hold the uh, country together. Like, really hold it together. I know I'm going to lose it all together, but. Wow, that was. That was really fast. It's only 1938. Holy cow, what did you do, uh, Goring? I believe. Sweet West Africa is like the main German country. Yeah, I don't think he will. Oh! Oh! The prince visits the French Republic! A prince Antonio Gastao of Bragnanza, last living son of Empress Isabel, now heads to visit the French government, currently in exile in Algiers. Being a des. a des. I can't speak tonight. a descendant of Bourbon royalty, he was denied the right to fight for France. His adoptive hope in the Veldt Creek, and thus joined the British forces in that conflict until its bitter end. While the trip is going to be just a little bit of sightseeing and meeting some members of the Bourbon family, the matter is well, being well documented in papers locally. I hope it wasn't too hot there. And they like us a little bit more. That's, that's really nice. Especially with the government that doesn't really <laughs> like us that much. Don't tell me. You, you, uh, you, you went with the Republic? What? We restored the monarchy and you went with the Republic? Man, France, no wonder you were sent to Africa. Come on. You should have restored the French Empire. We could have been buddies. You, we could have just been great, great buddies. No wonder you're down here. Slaving away. Probably never going to return to Europe. Come on. But, that is okay. People make mistakes, and history will not absolve them. Yeah, I'm not going to join the Entente yet. Oh yeah, I was trying to find where we could find... Can we create our own faction? Let's reforms, teach you battle lines, jungle warfare. That would be a good one to do. Let's see, it needs war. We got, we got, this is such a good focus tree. Look how much stuff there is to do. And with not just our path, but all the other paths with, like, you know, internal autocrats, left wing stuff with a coup, which I'm glad hasn't happened yet. Social democrats, or social liberals, or social conservatives. And there's the social liberals. And then, uh, liber liberal democrats. Alright, but there's, there's so much. So much. Just feel the love. Feel the love. Oh, the Socialist Republic of Honduras has joined the Revolutionary Front. At least they didn't join the Third International. So I guess we can't create our own faction, perhaps? Ooh, Argentina and Chile have settled their... Alright, Argentina's thick. And Chile... Counter... Oh, oh no. Counter-revolution in Chile. Though Chile was once viewed as the most successful bastion of syndicalism and social values in South America, it appears that its regime stands no more. Clear failings in leadership during the war against Argentina and the dire strategic situation facing the nation today led to a cabal of military officers or officials seizing power in Santiago and the number of key strongholds in the city across the country. Nationalist Chile. Why is everyone going, like, right wing right now? I last word was annexed. I don't care. It's fine. But don't autocrat. You're a national populist. I'm a national populist. We kind of, we actually like them quite a bit. They supported us, and we have the same ideology. Reintegrate that little southern region of uh, Argentina. The fall of Madrid. Uh oh. Confederacy to the Plaza. Let's see. What is this? More war support. What does that do? Ultimate confrontation. Oh, they get to annex us eventually. They try to. Oh, they'll try to annex us. That ain't gonna happen though. No, 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 no. Punish Paraguay. Uruguay is ours. Catholic brothers around the world encourage Spanish immigration. I wish I could do that. 
but it doesn't look like we can create our own faction, so I'm going to stay out of the Entente as much as possible. But now, Prince Antonio Castel of Braganza, last living son of the Empress Isabel, like we said earlier, heads to the final destination of his war, Portugal, the old homeland. It, to having its monarchy recently restored, is bound to give the aging soldiers, soldier prince the proper welcome such a man deserves. And we get to like a more... And oh, we've healed the chaos. Ah, oh, yes. Now, we can do corporate power for... We can remove Black Monday Fallout as and then extreme decentralization? Oh my gosh, this is like right on our doorstep. We get faster construction speed, better factory output, or get more stability and daily political power. Oh. Close are we to getting to them? 84 out of 270 days. Struggling. They have a struggling economy, which means I want to attack them as soon as possible. With that in mind, with it, if I can get rid of extreme decentralized, uh, extreme black money fallout, divided military, we just got rid of the other one, so that didn't exactly help us out. What I could do is I could stop justifying on them because they're. Because we're more than almost 200 days away from that. Let's let's cancel and let's re-justify. So I wasted all that political power for nothing. And I saved about 15 days from doing that. Well, that was stupid me wasting that political power earlier, but that's okay. Uh, Black, Fall Black Monday. Black Monday was such a terrible thing. We get less resources. We get better construction speed, factory output. Ugh, I just think that's overall the corporate power is a thing you want to do. I think that's really, really the thing you want to do. Uh, we got that civilian factory done. Let's go ahead and try to make at least one more military factory before we go to war. Uh, we should be able to do it before we go to war. Should be, that's a key word. But yeah, we gotta make a ton of more guns. I really need more guns. Ooh. Ooh! And the King of Patagonia arrives in Rio. Antony, King of Patagonia, arrived in Rio today, fresh from France, on a quest from our, of our government. We seek his aid on important matters regarding the Mapuche and their status on the republics to the south. In time, we will see how wise he was. Can you believe Brazil is 84% popular with one party? Or people like it? Yeah, we only have 23% stability. Yeah, wow. Look at all that war support. We have 80, 68%? Wow, that's a lot of war support considering our stability. But a monument to Our Lady of Seafarers. Our Lady of Seafarers is not only one of the most popular, popular and venerated saints of Brazil, but also worshipped by African Brazilians as Yemoja, the Queen of the Waters and Yoruba legend. Pagan and Christian faith will meet and worship every year on February Dos to honor her. However, she lacks a monument to her faithful worthy uh, to their faithful worthy of her might. We must ensure that our lady is honored. Oh, I don't really have the political power for this. But it's the monument to our lady of seafarers, and this will help unite the nation. Which means it's actually gonna take a little bit longer for us to Justify on them, which is fine, which is fine. They're currently in a little bit of turmoil at the moment, so I'm thinking that it, that's okay. And we get 0.93 political power a day, so we'll get it out of that pretty soon. Pretty soon. Especially if we get rid of uh, this block, Monday Fallout, so we can get more construction speed and factory output. The B, Z, and S takes power on... Okay. Oh, they were released by both Romania, it looks like, and Serbia, but not by Greece. Oh, look at that stash. Alexander Stamboyevsky, a puppet of Serbia, and their social conservatives. Alright, well, good luck. Russian state declared war on the Turkestan Khanate, over here, pretty expected. <laughs> Bolivia, yeah, they're struggling. They're, they, that's good, I'm glad to see that. They have just a little bit less divisions than we do. We, they have two military factories. We have five times as many military factories and about almost four times as many civilian factories, and we have way more manpower than them. Fall of Beijing, ooh, against Japan, that'll be good. I think we should we should be able to fight them off, beat them, and not annex them, but, you know, add them to our faction alliance. Republic of El Salvador declared war in Guatemala, Nicaragua declared war in the Republic of El Salvador, and it looks like, yeah, the Feng Chin government took them out. You're fighting, oh, you're fighting, oh, I see, you're fighting Japan. National populace, eh? Well, that's not good. Yeah, well, American, you say... Oh! Hey, then. 
Hawaiian royalty visits Rio de Janeiro. The Hawaiian royal family has come to Rio de Janeiro in order to meet with the Brazilian royal family. They spent <clears throat> their day touring the sites of Rio de Janeiro as well as private meetings with the political leaders of the country. The relations between the Empire of Brazil and the Kingdom of Hawaii have improved because of this visit. Aloha from Brazil. Man, we are just trying to make friends with everyone. Everyone who is anyone wants to come visit Brazil. And Russians declared war in Georgia. Why are we not surprised? And I believe Russia has the Vaz, and they are, they like us, so I'm okay with that. And they're helping the Americans win. Oh, and Bulgaria did not want to be a puppet under Serbia, but they're going to get crushed. Oh, what, what, wait, wait. Okay, so I said that thinking that Romania and Serbia were allied. But now Bulgaria is fighting Serbia, but Serbia is fighting both of them. Whoa! So, who, why? Why? Romania is going to help the Serbian puppet who is rebelling against Serbia. You know, this truth is stranger than fiction. So apparently, pro Slavic government under the Prime Minister Alexander. Oh, they ended their hostilities. So, Boris, you're back! Are you fighting Romania? You're still fighting Romania. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's how many divisions they have. Manpower. Oh, that's a lot more manpower and quite a few more divisions. Hippomonic is threat. Now that's interesting. And the Republic of El Salvador was annexed. Poor El Salvador. Oh well. Maybe we'll have to fight them someday. Oh, and they came back. Salvadorian commune. Oops. Oh, and they're fighting Guatemala still or something? Yeah, they're fighting Guatemala. Guatemala is fighting all, all three of these. Oh, Zambia was... Oh, Zambia was... Zambia, not Zambia. <laughs> Zambia. Nambi land. Oh, look. Oh, Africa. Always in a perpetual state of civil war. What's that country? Barotseland. Alright, well, whatever. We should be done with our focus pretty soon. And we do have a little bit of political power, so that's kind of nice. Alright. Time for another sip of cup. Not coffee. Tea. Very good. Very, very good. Corporate power. So we'll get one more civilian factory. Not much, but better than nothing. Yeah. Ooh, that actually came up uh, a little sooner. It was supposed to be done in September of this year, but it's actually done in August. Good. Corporate power. We got one more civilian factory, and Dominion's victory in South Africa, which means we might have another South African civil war very soon. Uh, review title grants. We're not good. We're gonna ignore that for now. To education, or uh, daily political power. One nation. Yeah. Let's get rid of extreme decentralization, so we will get plus ten stability. But then plus another 20 stability and more daily political power. Brazilian first. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll go back and try to unite the nation under... Or unite the army. That'll be our following goals. Because there's a lot of focuses you have to get through first before you can really do anything else. And this... Uh, playing as Brazil. So we've got 140 days left. So it'll probably be next episode when we can actually declare war. Which is fine. We should be able to beat these guys off. And we beat... Uh, Bolivia up, we will have access to the Pacific Ocean, if we do. Ooh, 1912 Dreadnoughts, alright, and Delay Doctrine done. Awesome. So doing that, uh, let us get this next support weapons, and keep going down our focus down this way. Alright, so we got 29% stability. Guatemala was, oh my gosh, annex. Oh, they formed Central America. You know, I don't really like syndicalism, or radical socialists, or totalists, or anyone of that ilk. He says join the Entente. Interesting. But, hey, at least it's one country now. So modernists gather in Sao Paulo again. While modernist circles have met and even had exhibitions of their own, the grand meeting in Sao Paulo today is the beginning of a new era. A whole week dedicated to modern Brazilian art. But all that entails has begun today, sponsored by Sao Paulo's magnates. While there is a remarkable influence of European thought in the works presented, they are also distinctly Brazilian in their own way and mark an important turning point in arts and even culture in their own nation. A grand tradition. And we hope it continues for a long, long time. Ah, yes, good team. Actually, my guys. You know what? I'm going to have them train. Even though I'm out of guns, I would like to see maybe them train a little bit more. The fall of Burgos, Carlos are going to die. The CNT is going to win. That is troublesome. So we've got 18 wins. Uh, how much... I have no... 
supplies. I, adding any of these guys would be a waste of time, maybe, except for artillery, actually. It only costs 12 artillery and just a little bit more manpower. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of artillery in there. Since we have that, we're going to add a little bit of another infantry battalion in there as well. Now, we have one of these divisions. It's six... Yeah, that's a waste. So you are just going to become a standard division. I don't care for militia. You're going to become a standard division. And you will become a standard division as well. The forces, though, will be interesting what I can do with them. 1738. We want to make sure that we're keeping up on our tank research, because eventually what I want is to have an, a powerful industry enough to have some sort of tanks available to use. So I'm sure that really hurt our production of stuff, but I'm sure we'll get out of our artillery deficit soon enough, as well as our guns. The World Cup begins! 16 nations have gathered in Brazil today in the 1938 Football World Cup. As the world turns its attention to our stadium, eager crowds get ready to hope to what they hope will be Brazil's first title, but Uruguay's strong team is already training in Rio for a month. But pretty much in Rio will be between Brazil and Hungary. Good luck. Oh, and Duarte II marries our relative. Oh, this is the 1900s. Duarte II married today a member of the imperial family of Brazil and distant relative Maria Francesca de Braganza in a lavish wedding in Lisboa. The wedding, long planned by the house of Braganza, I always spell this wrong. I say this wrong. I'm sorry, guys. I pronounce it terribly. Braganza across the Atlantic is the culmination of years and diplomacy, and the people of Portugal hope a royal heir will soon arrive. Friendship will last between our countries. Yeah, Uruguay. Uh, <clears throat> you'll probably win the war. Faith and democracy. Social Democrat. Well, we'll see about that, buddy. Portugal, you must really like us. Oh, they're national populists too. Makes sense. Georgia was annexed. The organic kingdom. <clears throat> the burden we bear, Portuguese youth. Uh, let's see, priorities of the state, organic legal code. That coffee's getting kind of not tasty. Hmm. Well, there's nothing about supporting us, which is, I guess, kind of expected, but that's okay. Ultra marine effort. Alright, well, interesting. Very interesting. And the American United States is dying. I'm going to assume that... Hmm, I'm going to call it now. It's either the USA will win, or... Oh, they got National Guards. The CSA will win, and they have a Revolutionary National Guard, and the American Union State has... No, no Guard. I guess they have National Guards. You have half a million soldiers with up to 117 soldier divisions. You have 121 divisions and that much manpower. I don't know. That'll be kind of hard to tell. The... Oh... Ottomans have lost, maybe. Maybe? I don't know. It's, it'll be hard to tell if once the American Union, Union State's dead. Oh, and Hawaii's doing the Reich's back. I want to say the USA is going to win, even though we didn't support them. We supported these other guys. Honestly, I hope the USA wins, even though I don't really like them that much. And that uh, CSA loses. Because we don't need another syndicalist mega monster here. And the Ottomans have been reduced to a rump state. Under Abdul Mesed II. Kurdistan exists, watch out. We have Tur Turkish people on suicide watch now. Let's see, we have the Sultanate of Egypt, which honestly, I would, in my own opinion, think it has too much land here. Iran, you should give some of this territory to Kurdistan, but, but you know, that's, that's just me. And Ch oh, Chile wins the World Cup. Alright, so Uruguay didn't win. Usually they win in my games. Oh, what's happening? Oh, oh. Well, we saw it on screen, guys. The Beijing government has taken more territory, as well as, I guess, pretty much everyone took more territory from Beijing, China. It's kind of interesting. Actually, that's very interesting. Very, very interesting to see. Oh, and the League of Eight Provinces has been released, and they don't have a focus tree. All right, well, that's okay. Let's go back to here. Our cavalry division. Uh, it's 14, it's 12 width. I could make it 10 or 14. I'm going to use it. Let's at least make it... A little better. Ooh, and one nation is good. Ah, oh, now we have a divided military, and that's it. So we got rid of extreme decentralization. We have 60% stability. Holy cow! Oh my god, that's so good. We could do protect the first Brazilians, purchase Spectra, more data, more power, Christian trade unions, plus 20% more stability. Wow. Yeah, with. The rest of this is great, and I will get to it eventually, but I'm thinking right now, 
it's time we really focus on our our army. So we're gonna go with this, bridging the uh, Brazilian archipelago, the logistics, and then unite the army eventually. So uniting the army under federal control is a deeply political, costly endeavor, and consider options wisely. Or decentralized, usually, the war almost broke out semblance of federal authority over the army, and our forces are truly a mess of commanders and officers. Sounds like we're going to need a lot of political power for that. So, and we want to get to down here eventually, anyways. So, with that in mind, we're going to go doing this first, and we'll call this an episode. Well, guys, we're still kind of biding our time. We've learned about what's going to happen down here in South America. We will strike Bolivia first, and we're we should be able to get to it next episode. And Paraguay now as a puppet of Argentina, and Chile is actually by themselves, which is pretty good and interesting to know. Well guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. A lot, the world has definitely changed with Central America being formed. So, uh, the Southern South America has calmed down for now. Mental Africa exploded into normal Africa with all those civil wars. Qing China is capitulated, and the Russian state grows ever larger. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like if you like this episode. Subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you tomorrow as we continue our great Brazilian rule as an empire. Thank you very much for watching.